Okay, we'll move on to the mailbag. We had we had a Bears question, but I think it came up again in the mailbag, so we could touch on it here. Uh, we'll go through it. All right, XX McLovin, XX. I mean, he's always hey, he's always a, leaving. Great we questions. can always count on McLovin. Great, great questions, loyal great support. comments. He's a loyal supporter. Uh, there's a few of them, actually, multiple coming in from uh, XX McLovin, and he says this one's for Jack. Is he excited for Wilson to say Steelers country? Let's ride. Or let's weld. Let's weld. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I think that sounds much better than uh, than let's ride. I'm ready to weld with Russ. That's great. Let's get it going. Uh, at NFC North Packers says, can you guys rank the NFC North teams based on offense and then rank based off of defense? All right. We're going offense right now to start. I have to go. Lions, right? I no. think, you know, I go, I go Green Bay go one. Packers. I go Detroit two. I'm gonna. God, I, I, I mean, look at look at what Chicago is doing. Oh, you know what you have to say. I got Keenan Allen hurts, now, but we have to say it. I'm no, no, no. I'm gonna go right now. Vikings, Bears. I like O'Connell. Um, I think I think Donald will be okay, but it's very soon that will probably flip to Caleb. Yes, very soon they'll flip to the Bears. But right now, I'm gonna go with Vikings. With how you love Caleb Williams, you're taking the Vikings offense over the Bears. I, I, I think Jefferson, Aaron Jones, Jordan Addison, T.J. Hawkinson is, is great. Better than Allen and DJ Moore. I, I think that uh, Kevin O'Connell is a big, a big factor for me. I think he's a great offensive mind. Okay. And, and plus, yeah. it, might, it might wind up being a, a rookie, rookie quarterback. I, I, I love. I think O'Connell. these are great offers. I love the Vikings players, but absolutely not. It's Green Bay, Detroit, Chicago, Minnesota. I will say, I do think I expect that in the NFC North, all four teams will finish with above average offenses which is pretty uncommon. It's tough for every team in a division to have an above average offense. I think you are going to get that in the NFC this year. Cause I think the defenses are all right, but the offenses will be so much better than the defenses and the offenses will be great competitive best division in the league for offense. Yeah. Okay. I, and, yeah, I, I'd probably go Packers lions. Bears, Bears Vikings. Vikings. Yeah. Yeah, it does sound a little weird saying Sam. We've Donald. just given up on the Jordan Love thing. He's just too damn. Oh, he's just good. he's just awesome. Yeah, he's awesome. I look, the, the Lions. Lions have a really good offense too. I know Tom's gonna. Our friend Tom Monroe, big Lions fan, is gonna wind up texting and be like, "Oh, you guys are just sucking up to the Packers." No, the Lions are really, really good offense. No, I mean yeah, these Lions could be are, yeah. two of the five yeah. best offenses in the NFL next year. Yeah, it's yeah. uh, oh, man, Lions are awesome. Jared Goff, which I, at this point you have to just say you, you expect him to show up. Jared Goff shows up. That line's offense is tough to stop. Uh, defensively, you know, less impressive. Uh, like you were saying, Ziggy, on the defensive side of the ball here. Um, I got the Vikings defense as the worst <laughs> coming into the season. Then I'd probably, I actually think a lot of them are kind of close. Chicago ended the year so strong. I'm, I'm actually tempted to put them um, close to that top spot. But I guess I would go with Detroit secondary. I'm still a little worried. Maybe Detroit three, Chicago. It's Green Bay one. It's Green Bay also one here. I think they are with that uh that McKinney edition now. With McKinney. Yeah. Is it I, Green Bay one? I go Packers, Chicago, Lions, Bears, Vikings. Chicago two, Detroit three, Vikings four. Nah, I, I actually two. I think Chicago I think Chicago might have the best defense next year. I, I, think I was really close. impressed of how they finished the season and I like some of the additions they've made. I think they're gonna draft defense. So yeah, it's for me, it's probably Chicago, Green Bay, Detroit, Minnesota. But there's only one thing we can all agree on: Minnesota. Minnesota's, well, Minnesota's last. last. I'm trying to actually think here, though, man. With with Hutchinson, Detroit. The problem is Detroit's Colin got Davis. a lot of solid players, but they don't. I'm still worried about the cornerback situation. Yeah, even I with Carlton Davis. Yeah, you know what? I'll go Chicago two, Detroit three, and then I guess Green Bay would be one right now. That's close, though. I think those three are going to be close throughout the season. Green Bay is going to roll us, dude. Uh, Merle Merle I mean, says, who y'all picking for March Madness? Merle. Oh, go check out. You got to check out our show. You got to check it out, Merle. Yeah. If you I mean, it's through. 50 minutes of March Madness. Some of the most in-depth discussion oh, you will God. find from any football podcast on the internet. If you listen to the first 15 minutes of this show and the first 15 minutes of that show, you learned very quickly why we're a, uh, an NFL. I mean, you know what? That's because we're dead. I, no, so. I'm, I'll tell you. I'm proud of what we did. I, I thought, thought, it was that, was real, I thought it was a great show. Yeah. I the fans can let us know, but I think like that was a real contribution. This is good. One of the best March Madness podcasts from an all football podcast on the internet. Yeah, very fair. Uh, Red Azteca says your favorite and least favorite moments of the Vikings playing the other teams in the division. I I, I got this right here. If that's okay with you guys. I got. This. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. You're the white I mean, one. Oh man, not a Vikings fan. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, the Bears very, and you have to remember, 
in my like in my lifetime, I was born in 1998. So there are some games that people are going to bring up that I you know that just didn't didn't watch. Um, Bears 2007, Adrian Peterson's rookie year on my birthday when he absolutely demolished Chicago in Chicago. Uh, three touchdowns, huge, a huge. I mean, unbelievable performance. And it capped it off with a uh, like 60 yard kickoff return to set up the game winning field goal by Ryan Longwell. We'll never forget that game. Uh, worst Bears game, probably the 2009 season when the Vikings were 12 and four, lost to Saints in the NFC Championship game. Towards the end of the year, we lost an overtime game to Chicago. I think they were like four and 12 that year or six and 10, something. Chicago was bad. And we lost an overtime game when uh, Peterson fumbled in overtime. That was, that was absolutely horrible. There might be one more Bears one. I thought there was another really bad Bears game. I mean, we went to a Bears Vikings game, Ziggy. In, uh, oh, that was that's my worst moment watching the Vikings. <laughs> that was that game was horrible. That that wasn't worse to me though. Didn't the Bears win like six three in that game? You no, were, I was like thirteen like, nine. Was it low score? Yeah, it was like. 19 we were freezing the bears just took control of the whole game the defense was great that game but no the 2009 game that absolutely sucked um i'll be a little quicker here <laughs> with the uh, the lions i would say the best lions game man we don't really have a lot of like I and mean, we kind of just woof i mean who cares probably. about the lions right <laughs> well yeah the worst lions game i remember the year we had donovan McNabb. we were up like 20 nothing at halftime and detroit came back and won with uh you have McNabb. We had McNabb for you. We, we we were up big in all all the games he started, and then we gave up a couple of huge leads. Detroit was down twenty nothing. People will probably remember this, and they came back and won. Calvin Johnson was amazing. Um, then the game where Golden Tate flipped in the end zone. I think the Lions had the ball with one timeout or something, and twenty seconds left in the game on the twenty five, and won in overtime. I think you were at my house for that. Golden Tate flipped into the end zone when Harrison Smith hit him. I don't know if you remember that, but that was horrible. About it. Uh, that was horrible. Detroit, that. great games. I don't know. We, we just line suck. Um, and then the Packers. So many miserable games to pick from. <laughs> what, what good games do we have against the Packers? Um, you know, there was that moment this year, I guess. Yeah, what? I, I'm trying to think. No, good games? Like any good games from the... Yeah. Oh, yeah. A couple, there were a couple of really good ones. Um, I remember trying to remember when Zimmer beat them. Was that to win the division? I can't remember right now. We beat them in Lambeau late in the year. Can you Google that, Ziggy? Yeah. Um, Trying to remember that one. I remember I remember loving the game when we opened U.S. Bank Stadium and uh, we intercepted. Trey Waynes picked off Rodgers to win the game in, I think, week two. Oh, I Sunday Night that. Football. Yeah, That yeah, was yeah, a great yeah. Viking Packer moment. I do remember that. Um. Yeah. There's an, there's another one though that I'm trying to remember. Oh, of course. Oh my God. How am I forgetting? How, the, the Favre. Favre going back into Lambeau Field and Favre on Monday. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Those are amazing. I, look, all the Packers fans, I hope that you guys rewatch those games with absolute misery if you ever see it. Uh, that When Favre went in and kicked your ass twice that year, that was <laughs> unbelievable. One of my favorite plays ever is the Percy Harvin touchdown when he caught it between three Packers. Three Packers ran into each other and Harvin ran to the end zone. Oh, that, I mean, I'm was, surprised that you didn't pick uh, Anthony Barr just shattering Rodgers' collarbone. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> Entering the well, that, if, if, that if the Packers the fan would pick a game like that with us. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, I, I know. And I'm never ruined for injuries or anything, but that did open the door. <laughs> I mean, that did create an opportunity that year, which we did take advantage of to a, to a degree. I mean, the worst Packer game is probably going to be a game where like, Jordy Nelson had like 500 yards and like three touchdowns, right? Um. Oh, there was one more great one. When we beat them in Minnesota, when Peterson went over 2,000 yards to get into the playoffs, mm -hmm. we had to win mm -hmm. to get in. Oh, that was so good. He ran for like 200 or something. There's a lot, there's a lot of good Viking wins over Packers. Um, in terms no, of not losses, when it counts. In terms of losses, now this is this is what people want to hear. Um, yeah, there was one game, and it's it might not stick out for like the right reasons, but I remember we beat Atlanta with Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy's first game coming in playing and we were so high Vikings fans so high and um <laughs> yeah we were on top of the world and then Teddy wound up getting hurt and not playing in the Thursday night game and Christian Ponder went into Green Bay and we got oh my yeah. god housed we got destroyed I remember I remember my dad left and went to bed and my dad my, he may have even left the house it was a 42 3 or something like that. And then Coon, that's when freaking John Coons hopping in the doing the Lambo leap. That game sucked. The playoff game sucked right after when uh, Ponder got hurt. 
following the Adrian Peterson 2000 yard game, we lost in the playoffs with Joe Webb. That game sucked. Um, a few years ago with Zimmer, we were on a roll and we had beat Green Bay shirts. They spanked us in P, uh, TCF Bank Stadium. And there's so many great Packer, you know, annihilation games of the Vikings. The year we were 14 and uh, 13 and four last year, two years ago. Remember, we went to Green Bay and they mopped us yeah. in Green Bay. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So some of those games sucked. Sorry. Sorry to ramble on. There's just a lot of NFC North games. Yeah, old stuck memories in my are coming back. Memories are coming back. Good and bad. Good and bad. Uh, Colin six seven six says thoughts on the field straight. Do you trust Williams with all the new weapons around him? I just talked a lot. It, we, yeah, but we answered the Fields question, but we didn't answer the Caleb Williams question a whole lot, which is uh, honestly, you know, when people talk about trust, I'm not always entirely sure what that means, right? Like, do I think he's instantly going to be a star? No, but here's what I think the Bears have done. I think the Bears have put themselves in a position to maximize what Caleb Williams is going to be able to do for them. And I, I like Caleb Williams. I think it's going to take him a little time to adjust, but he's going to be good. But unlike when Justin Fields stepped in, and I think he was in a tough situation, Caleb Williams, hopefully the new offensive coordinator is going to be able to get it done. But they've got a functional offensive line and good weapons. He'll be as well supported as a rookie quarterback could reasonably hope for. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I'm not a huge Caleb Williams guy. I think the potential he has is pretty unmatched. Like he does things that not many can do. The situation's good. Got Keenan Allen. You got DJ Moore. It's tough for me to trust a kid coming out of college who hasn't taken an NFL snap. Uh, so I, I, I can't see him being an instant superstar. But I think there's a level of potential that he's able to reach. And if he does, he could be very, very good. So Colin asked, that was Colin who said, do you trust Williams with all the new weapons around him? Uh, we had Cycronos, uh, Cycronos. Again, my pronunciation is close, 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 close enough. Probably. Yeah, Paul, I don't, I don't know what, how you do such a bad job. And he's like, people are lighting you up. What, and people... for good reason. You can't pronounce anything. <laughs> As a host, yeah. What is it? Is it Cycronos or Cycronos? Cycronos? I go Cycronos. Cycronos? I mean, it's... All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Relax here, relax here. No one knows how to say it. Yeah, it's, it's probably... It's probably it's S-Y-C-R-O-N-O-S. I mean, that's a... That's probably, anything. Cycronos, yeah. Cycronos. 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 Uh, I'm going to loop in this question with what Colin asked. He said, do you guys have any faith the Bears can actually develop a rookie quarterback or, the, or are they more likely to ruin another one? Um, so I was thinking to myself, okay... Like who are the you know the Bears have had a couple of new quarterbacks coming in first round picks early, uh, and I went back to Rex Grossman. Their last three hot first round drafted quarterbacks, you know, pre Caleb Williams. Now Rex Grossman, number twenty two overall in two thousand three. Mitch, number two in twenty seventeen. Number two, I, I forgot about it. Number two and Fields, number eleven in twenty twenty one. Look back at the weapons each of those guys had around them going into those years. Rex Grossman will do wide receiver, wide receiver, running back. Rex Grossman had Marty Booker, Des White, and Anthony Thomas. Leading receiver on that team at 715 yards. That was Marty Booker. Anthony Thomas was a 1,000-yard running back. But, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the roster Rex Grossman had. Now, I don't think he started that year, but, like, not a great set of weapons there in Chicago. Mitch Trubisky, when he came in, 2017. Jordan Howard, Josh Bellamy, Kendall Wright. Those were his weapons. I mean, that was right after they'd blown that pick on Kevin Smith, right? What, White? Kevin White? Or Kevin White, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, Kevin. Uh, yeah. I can't even remember his name. Deion he Sims washed was out of the so fast. So, again, Mitch Trubisky comes in. That offense did not have a lot. Now they slowly built up, but not really a great environment to come in. And then Fields, he came in with David Montgomery, Darnell Mooney, Allen Robinson. Cole Komet, I think, was also a rookie or in one year one. That I mean, that's the best you'd seen so far. But this is the best hit by far with Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, and uh, DeAndre Swift now. Yeah, like I think that I think that what Chicago has done, and it's actually improved each year from all those quarterbacks. I said, but this is, you're right, Ziggy. This is a, a a weapons group that can actually be good for Caleb Williams. Like there is there is a real threat in these receivers and the running back now that Chicago has, which they have not had for a long time. So even though the Keenan Allen thing's a one year deal. I do think for a rookie quarterback in terms of developing confidence, yeah, Chicago's got, I mean, how many, how many places are you going to take the wide receiver, wide receiver running back combo over, over Chicago? Yeah, no, I, mean, I, 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 I totally agree. Caleb Williams, I was going to, you brought up a point that I was going to bring up. He reminds me a little bit of what I saw from Justin Fields at Ohio State. Similar type of players, but Justin Fields had, you know, those, that, load of weapons at Ohio State. And Caleb Williams had 
Jordan Addison. And now when Jordan Addison was gone, he takes a bit. I mean, his season's not as great. Which is why I think it's super important, the weapons you have around you with this level of play, trying to adjust. I mean, that three that you just named, it really is tough to get more solid than that right now, being a rookie quarterback, trying to develop. Uh, so I think, there's, I think there's a better chance here that he can be their franchise quarterback than they totally ruin him. Yeah, no, I mean, look, Caleb with, Williams has those weapons like with <laughs> that the, Justin Fields has. They're winning the national championship. Like, Caleb Williams... He has like he has happy feet. He he tries to do a lot, a little too much sometimes. But I think that's Notre just, Dame. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but you you can't blame him like, behind the offensive line that he yeah. had to work with. No, it's tough. That's well, just, I think he's gonna be great. But it's just coaching. <laughs> that's just coaching yeah. and adjusting to the to the NFL level. It's funny. Before we just move on to the next question here, think about the you know the running back, wide receiver, wide receiver combinations in the NFC North with Aaron Jones, Jefferson, Addison. Jacobs, I mean, take your pick of the the Packers weapon. Oh, yeah, Watson. And then you have Gibbs slash Montgomery with Amon Ra and you have Jameson. Or who, who, who's they have another one right now? Is it Jameson? I think it's just Jameson. Mar- right? Marvin Jones, he's still there. I don't know, I don't know who Detroit is. <laughs> Probably say Jameson Williams. Um, still like great. I mean, great offensive division. Uh, the second question from. Sacronos was also which NFC North team do you think has the brightest future? We've said this a gazillion times. We're going to say it again. I don't want to say it again. The Packers. Have, they, 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 just they, want, they just want. Yeah, us to they just want. We get they, it. We they want, yeah, they want us to say. They want us to say. The quarterback. All right. The horrible. The cheese. It's, it's horrible. Yes. Is that is that what people want? They just want to hear me say the Packers are really good. Does someone want to clip that and throw it all over the internet? Because they are. <laughs> they are. Uh, it's pretty funny. Okay. Uh, a couple more from XX McLovin. He says. What an up and down week for the NFL. What are your thoughts on Josh Jacobs and Xavier McKinney saying one of the main reasons for joining the Packers is because of love and the appeal he has? I actually hadn't seen that yet. I, I, didn't, I didn't read into that. Um, that's another benefit of having a great quarterback. When you when you have a quarterback people believe in, you start to become almost a recruiter just by being good. You know, Being good has, it, has many, many perks. Uh, I think it's a dangerous sight for the rest of the NFC North, the rest of the NFC. That if people, you know, people around the league believe in Jordan Love, it's not just Packers fans. And if he's able to draw talent, it's already a really loaded roster. Um, I, I think it one shows that, yeah, he's got all the talent in the world, but two, it seems like Jordan Love is also a great leader. Um, I think it's a great sign for the Packers. Nothing is more important to, uh, than, at least in my eyes, than support of teammates and players like that. When you go into the better stages in the NFL now, a, a position that you really needed in Green Bay coming over to your side because of what he thinks you can do after the season you just had, I think that is an awesome boost of confidence for Jordan Love. Right. Yeah, and I mean, one thing, I haven't seen people talk about this a lot. It's not directly related to this question. But like, McKinney and Jacobs are really good friends from their time together at Bama. You know, one of the things the Packers had going for them that made them so strong last year was all the locker room synergy, right? All these guys got along. Adding some older, more experienced leaders who you're hoping can help you take that next step on opposite sides of the ball who really get along. And, you know, we're forged in the Nick Saban fire. I really think there's a possibility those guys contribute a lot next year. And that with Jordan Love sort of become some of the bigger leaders of this team. Yeah, you know, with Bakhtiari gone, like that, that Aaron Rodgers era, and all of those guys are officially sort of gone. All of them, more or less, have left. I know there are some players who were on the roster at that time, but like Bakhtiari and Rodgers were tight. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's it's a new era in Green Bay, and with all of these people coming, it'll be interesting to see what they're able to do. Certainly, I will say, not exciting. I mean, listen, in terms of importance, season by season. Last year was more important to see that Jordan Love had the it factor. But I would say that this year for Packers fans, like this is when you find this is when you're going to find out now. Is are Jordan you, Love good or is Jordan Love great? Yeah, is he great? Are you going to yeah. be perennial contenders for the next decade? And the signs right now indicate that, OK, this guy, if this guy, like he seems like he's got it mentally now. And we already know it's the physical. It sucks. It sucks. I mean, if he does what he did. For nine yeah, games, guess, for, yeah, for, for, for seventeen, they could be fifteen and two. Uh, and McLovin has two more questions. He says, "Do you think this year's the year we'll see two NFC North teams in the NFC Championship game?" Uh, it's it's hard to uh, yeah, I have to say no. It's improbable. Yeah, I mean, it's possible, very possible. I think the Lions and Packers have to be the favorites for it again, but it's only tough because obviously one has to go on the road twice. 
twice. twice yeah. I, I'd probably say San Fran versus Green Bay slash Detroit again. Yeah, if, if you're if you're picking right now, the likely the Aaron Donald retirement was big for for the Rams. Like I do think that was massive. Um, yeah, in terms of if you're ranking the teams, the NFC Championship contender hopefuls, I would probably say right now San Francisco's got to be the one. Probably put Green Bay at two, honestly, and then Detroit three, maybe the Cowboys four. Yeah, yeah. Then what, like Ram, Philly five, the Rams then Philly. Um, that that, yeah. that that leads in nicely to the next question. The last question from McLovin. Lastly, what team do you think falls to uh, falls to being horrible this year? Do you think the Eagles rebound from playing terrible, or do you think they've hit a wall and will take a year to fix? Uh, in terms of teams, though, well, first Philly. There's way I, th- there's way too much talent on Philly to be terrible. I mean, they're, they're, I think Philly's gonna make it bad. Like the they're year. gonna make the playoffs, Philly. Like uh, talking about terrible. Wait, wait, Ziggy, you're Philly. Are you are you out on Philly? A lot, a lot of people are down. Are I mean, really down on. I think Philly finishes second in the division. I think if you finish second in the division, you can't say you had a horrible year. And it's not going to be year where there's like three, four, and thirteen teams. No, like Philly's, they'll be fine. I mean, are they going to reach the levels of Super Bowl contender? I don't think so. But it's tough. I think the offense will stay about the same, maybe get a little better, and the defense can't get worse. That's, no, if that's you're talking wrong. about teams that might go, that might really have a fall off, a lot of folks aren't going to want to hear this. But I think the Baltimore Ravens are a team to keep an eye on for that. I would I not that. be surprised to see the Ravens finish fourth in the division. Wow, Great offense. Don't get me wrong, but they lost so many key contributors on the offensive line, on the defense, on the coaching. And it takes a lot of time to replace that. Meanwhile, every single team in the division around them got better, improved, got healthier. It's one of the toughest divisions in football. I would not be surprised to see the Ravens finish fourth. I maybe like Tampa. Like I know Baker had a good year last year. Mike, yeah, but, good year, but it, was, like, it was an improbable run. Yeah, but there's a isn't there a world you can see Baker just sucking them going four and thirteen? Yeah, I I think look, Ziggy, you I know you said <laughs> I know you said Baltimore. I don't think you think Baltimore would be horrible. Right, you just think. If, I mean, but if you finish fourth in the division, I think Ravens can see as a huge. Yeah, even if you finish fourth in the division year. with seven wins, that's a ter- finishing fourth in the division is always terrible, Paul. You and I both know that. Yeah, no, no, that's fair. I think, in, yeah, yeah, that would be Ravens yeah, would be a horrible year. North is really good. solid too. Uh, but yeah, the other definition then of horrible, I think Tampa's a good pick there. Yeah, is there anyone else who could just be really? I mean, the Rams' defense could collapse without Aaron Donald, Rams and Matthew dead. Stafford gets hurt. You only need if Matthew Stafford gets hurt. This Rams team is horrendous. I mean, I, I here's another one: um, Vikings. Well, I mean, yeah, but we 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 don't have expectations right now. Oh, he's saying like team of that. I can see, I can see things going south in Cleveland. I don't, I don't expect them to, but. Cleveland's another one of those teams yeah. where the you know the defense was so good this year. If they if they step down a peg, <laughs> like, like do you really trust the Sean Watson? I I, don't. I mean look yeah like Philly's defense sets down a huge peg from yeah prior year to this past year. I don't think Philly's gonna be great. I think I think they're a wild card team. No, that's not horrible. No, it's not horrible. But like Cleveland, I could see. I don't think they will. But in terms of teams, you could see taking that step back. Yeah, is there anyone else? Could Buffalo? To me, the Bucks. No, too, Josh, Josh Allen's, Allen's too playing. Good. Yeah. yeah, the Bucks come to mind yeah. when I think when that question. Oh, the Packers. <laughs> yeah, the Packers. yeah. Oh, oh my the, God! I forget. Oh yeah, no, no, the Packers. I mean, yeah, I think Packers. it's going to be okay. the NFC North. Packers. Yeah, no, no. I think the Packers. Uh, like uh, when Love implodes, what was that like three and three and fourteen, three and 14. something like that? Yeah. <laughs> and if he sinks, <laughs> two and fifteen. And just messing around. Uh, okay, just a few more questions here, and, and we'll wrap this thing up. From. Long way to pro. I like that. Yeah, I like that too. Cool profile picture, I think. Yeah, actually, very cool profile picture. How are the Bears inevitably going to... <laughs> how are the Bears inevitably going to totally blow their season despite so many great free agent signings and off-season trades? <laughs> um, Drafting a lineman at one or something like that? No, I, I think Chicago is actually going to be solid this year. I, I, I expect them to threaten a wild card. Um, if it were to go wrong... It would just be really well, horrible development of Caleb during the season, or like, like some, that, that's it, or like you know, knock on wood, 
a horrible injury to kill. Oh well, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, like, but, a, like that that would blow it up. But yeah, but like that, something like that kind of doesn't count. They will be yeah. good. They will be good unless if they botch. Caleb no, no. During what the totally? Year. What to answer that question is is Caleb Williams being a total bust? Yeah, yeah. No, that, no. Or Chicago messing him up. Yeah, like, like, and like I that, don't, I don't expect that to happen. But that, that's it because the roster, roster's coming together nicely. Like that's the offensive that line question. too. You know, if that offensive line just collapses, and even if Caleb's okay and he. He's running for his life, making mistakes. Like as we said, trying to do too much. That's yeah. another. Like if the Bears fail, Caleb, that's how they will suck. <laughs> that's and it. Williams has tendency to do that too. Like he scrambles and does a lot. You have anything, Ziggy? Or are you just no complete agreement? I, I I I think people overrate the extent to which teams completely ruin quarterback development. I mean, it happens sometimes, right? But I think like every position, even though coaching matters, if you're a good player, you'll rise eventually. And if you're a bad player, there's no hope for you. The O-line has got to be a little, a little bit concerning, right? In that, re If you're trying to find something that would stop Chicago's offense. Yeah, but the, I, th I think the Bears offensive line is, I mean, they were well, average okay. last no, year. No, it's okay. But that's They've what... added some decent players. Like, I think it's going to be, you know, a slightly above average offensive line. And that's all you need. Oh, right? yeah, you no. don't need the yeah. best offensive line in the NFL. You need to be good enough to give your guy a chance. Okay. The Bears, Bears offensive team. line is going to do that. This Bears team is not bad. The Bears could be good. We'll see. They're my number one worst to first contender. We have from Dynasty 701. How likely do you think the Vikings make the playoffs with whoever's playing quarterback as long as Justin Jefferson stays? The rest of the team is solid. No? Playoffs. You're talking about I, playoffs? I mean, I think they're probably the worst team in the division. So oh, I need to I win, think a, I think need to win a, a world. Game. I think there's a world where the Vikings can, can no, be played. The there. NFC's not very good. It's not good. good. Like, like what like, do you have? You have you have Green Bay, Detroit. Let's say, let's say, and I don't even think there's a guarantee that every like these teams are just listing as being in. Like the Vikings could be better than the Bears. Like we could so be better than the Bears. Green Bay, Detroit, Philly, Dallas, San Francisco. But then the you got Falcons. Like, Seattle. And then you have the Falcons winning the South. Then the, then what? You have like the Rams. Seattle, the Rams, Seahawks, the Bears, like, yeah. I mean, maybe the Commanders of Drake May is unbelievable or something like that. But like those six and seven spots should be up for grabs. Yeah, I think that seven spot. And I'm not even going to write Philly in with the way they looked at the end. Like, I, I think the Vikings can 100 percent be a, a playoff threatening team. But I also can I also can see them being like three and fourteen. Yeah, I mean, but I I think the defense, you know, another year of Flores. I, but like I don't think you have to be, be better. Like to be the seven seed in the NFC, I don't know it was Green Bay last year, but I don't think you got to be very good. Nine and eight could like, like get you. Right? Nine and eight gets you the seven seed. You go probably not. Probably got to be double digit, but I think the Vikings have a shot. The, the, Ziggy, as a fellow Viking fan, am I being biased or? I don't see it. That's fair enough. I mean, neither do I. But I'm saying like there's a there's a world. I mean, there's always a chance, right? Like the Buccaneers made the playoffs last year. Anything can happen. But no, this is amazing. We have two more. From X Pomsky X, he says, here's a fun one. Please say this is true. A quote from Justin Jefferson on his first impression of Kirk Cousins. First time I ever met Kirk, he picked me up in a minivan to do a film study at his house. 30 minutes into the film session, his wife walked in his man cave with a platter of crackers and cheese. Kirk smiled at her and she smiled back. They stared at each other. <laughs> they, they stared at each other, lightly smiling without saying a word for 11 minutes. Then finally, she said, we'll leave you boys to watch your stories. Shortly after, Kirk said, I'm sorry you had to see that, Justin. That was our first fight. And Kirk and I never talked about it again. Sometimes I lay awake at night thinking about that. Like, do I need to call someone? What would I say? Is Julie okay? What's the sex like? If the, what's the sex like if that's how Kirk and Julie throw down? Justin Jefferson on on his first impression of Kirk Cousins as Wait, a rookie. So their fight, like their fight was just them staring at each other for 11 minutes? 11 minutes with Justin Jefferson in the room. <laughs> what? I could, after watching that quarterback doc too, like I could so see Kirk and his wife doing that. Like I could see how that plays out. I mean, it's fake. It's fake. That was, fake. That was written I, by him. That was I, written by I him. I see the man. That was a great bit of fan fiction. <laughs> that was unbelievable. Oh that was amazing. God. I was reading that. I didn't read the first part. I just read the quote when I first saw that. I was like, oh my God. But I was like, you, Jack, person. I, I, like, I could fun. envision that. Yeah, I thought it was true. I could see it. I could envision it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, he's Imagine smirking. Kirk, Kirk and his wife staring. <laughs> <laughs> With a slight smirk. 
for 11 minutes and Justin Jefferson just sitting on the couch oh. looking back and forth like, what the if, hell if is I going was, on? I thought he was going to say 11 seconds. I'm like, oh, then I heard minutes. I'm like, what? You know how long 11 minutes is? What is wrong with this dude? <laughs> oh, if I was Justin Jefferson, I'd... I'd would have left. You, you walk out. Like, you you walk out after after what ninety seconds? Like I, I think I give it a minute. I give it two minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're gone. Just imagine. <laughs> I thought that was so good. I thought that was so funny. The last question from Dinosaur Jones. Uh, another great name, Dinosaur yeah, Jones. Yeah, Dinosaur name. Jones might be the best name we've ever had. What's your dinosaur? Is it a T Rex? Yeah, yeah. I was a big dinosaur kid. You know how they had that little chart. Uh, going around social media or the graphic where it was like every every boy was one of these. It was um trucks, dinosaurs, um, more of the other two categories. Trucks, dinosaurs, might have been oh my gosh, what was it? A couple more things. I forget. I like balls. What? I mean I like I, what? <laughs> You know, like little, oh, I don't like, know. I don't. I don't know what you mean. Like the like, I don't know. Like they like bouncy balls and oh, bouncy balls. balls, like all that kind of stuff. No, it's like a topic. Ziggy, do you have your computer in front of you? Uh, yeah. What do we need? Can you actually find this? It was a graphic. It was like all boys, like one of these four things growing up. It was dinosaurs, trucks. You like balls? I think another one might. Have one of them must have been trains, right? Is that like trains or construction, something like that? And then um, there's I had a else. lot of cars. I, I was oh I was a dinosaur. I, I got a lot of little. Uh, oh, you said we've car. got dinosaur, bulldozer, truck, and spaceship. Spaceships, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spaceships. I was definitely a dinosaur guy. Girl. I always had little race car like toys. Land before time. Oh, that's great. That's great. I love how we. This isn't even a question. We just <laughs> right, get to the off. question. Get to the question. Get to the question. Uh, dinosaur Jones says, "Which one of you is the worst at fantasy?" And Ryan Reed said, "Good question, dinosaur." Well, I could probably answer that. I mean, one. This is obvious. This, <laughs> this is obvious. As unfortunate uh, yeah. it is for me to say this, you know, he's such my good friend, but Paul's a horrible fan. <laughs> Come on, I, <laughs> get out of here. I, I, I'm a, I'm, get out of here. I'm a much worse fantasy player. I think I have an average position of finish of ninth place over the last like six years and the worst record in our league over the last six years. Right? Yeah, it's it's uh, and then actually that was shocking to see. We calculated who had the worst record. Um, this league of Jack and I and our friends from back home. Um, so Ziggy. Fortunately, is able to avoid this because who knows where Ziggy could could have fallen. But uh, but Jack, yeah, the, he's has the worst record in the league over the past like four or five years. I mean, lost the league what two years ago? Well, wait, were you in the playoffs this year? Were you you were horrible, weren't you? I was horrible. <clears throat> I think, Which is kind of crazy because I think Jack is one of the more no, no, no. like respected players. I was in the playoffs. I lost in the first round. Yeah, that, was like this playoffs. was a better year for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I uh, yeah. <laughs> But even won like, the league. Even the but even the years where I didn't come in last, I was like second and last, third. No, no, but you're either really bad or really good. Yeah. So yeah. you'd rather be that than than you know barely miss out. Consistently like eighth place. But yeah, yeah, Jack, Jack, I would say. I mean, you had Nick Chubb. Like you, they're unlucky breaks. And Ziggy, in terms of me or Ziggy, you know, Ziggy is a good fantasy. Ziggy for a second looked like he was going to have an absolute dynasty roster, uh, like crazy good roster. Then the league dynasty reset. League. And then it then it reset. Um, Ziggy's a very good general manager, but he does so by preying on the weak in the league. Which is Paul, uh, Paul, come on. Come nothing, on. Guys, I, nothing, made, there's nothing. I made one trade that wasn't even all that questionable. <laughs> I think I think Ziggy preys on the weaker football minds, but but you know what? Ziggy also Well, every every mind's a fo- weaker football mind than me. So <laughs> yeah, I have no fair, choice. Fair enough. Um yeah. I mean, I do win the leagues, but yeah, I would say Ziggy, Ziggy's very good. Jack has his moments of, uh, I mean, Jack had a couple of really good teams, but yeah, Jack is the worst. Yeah, I, 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 I'd I, agree. I'd agree. But I could see you storming back and winning. Like, it wouldn't shock me. There's people that... No, I mean, he, me Jack might won. be worse, but he's not bad. He knows, well, no, he he, knows the game. Well, actually, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. bad. And the thing about Jack <laughs> is, you know, every year there's something unexpected that does really well. Jack's one of those guys. He's not great at picking at the top of the draft. But he has a vision later on. <laughs> and sometimes you never know what's coming. I, like, j- there are people that would stun me if they won the league. Jack is not one of those guys. Jack, if I, Jack wanted to go, like, okay, that makes sense. But um, wait, who do you, who were your first two picks? You took Waddle and... I took Waddle and Chubb. And, oh, and Ch- yeah, Chubb got her. Yeah, yeah. So you got on the walkie. Yeah. You know, yeah. I might, I might you just, took Waddle early. Though, I might right? just be a name at this point, though. You might. Like, like, I might be like a... Like a Duke. Like, we know Duke's not going to win at all. No, 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 no. You're not Duke. Duke, Duke, Duke goes to the Final Four. No, like, I'm talking about not... this year. Like, this year. It's like, oh, like... No, you're like Nebraska football or something like that. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
who, who, who's yeah, you might be Notre Dame. Thank <laughs> God you might be a Notre Dame. I'm worse than Notre Dame. <laughs> I don't know, man. You might be. <laughs> oh, that sucks to say. Okay, we'll wrap up the show there. It's not funny, guys. We uh, hop on early. To, yet somehow we always end up at nine o'clock. <laughs> it always finds. We always find a way. Not nine o'clock yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, thanks for listening. Remember, please check out if you if you've made it this far, which is unbelievable. I mean, you consumed what two hours of this show's content today. If yeah. you watched no, everything, we, we appreciate you. Oh yes, I mean, un- yeah, unbelievably so. We appreciate it. and everyone who leaves a comment. We do see every comment, by the way. We can't respond to every single one, um, or we get fired from our jobs. But we do see every comment, and a lot of them we do we, like we react to. We send screenshots in our chat all the time, um, and they help us plan the shows too. So the more comments that you send in. Uh, you know, it does impact what we talk about, uh, especially the mailbags, you know, literally answer all these. So appreciate everyone who's been commenting. And then uh, remember to join our March Madness pool if you haven't. Free to enter, win a piece of merch, get a shout out on the show. Who knows what other prizes could be included? A, a great package because to win this bracket challenge, I mean, you really know what you're talking about. You got to go through three juggernauts. I mean, these, right are, these are three guys right here. You got to go through three juggernauts. If you listen to the March Madness show, you know, like, this is oh. this is. Oh, before we wrap up, I have one last bit of football news. This is this is news you will only hear on the Paul Farrington show. You know who the Patriots director of college scouting is, Paul? I mean, I mean. He's an old guy who goes by the name Cameron Williams. He is completely inactive on Twitter. Doesn't tweet a whole lot, doesn't like anything, doesn't repost anything, right? I have no idea. For the first know. time in 2024, he has liked a tweet. The first time in three and a half months, by the way, he liked a single tweet. You know what this tweet says? I'm telling you guys, Drake May is a Viking. They're sending a godfather offer for number three. Josh McCown coached Drake May in high school. He fits Kevin O'Connell's system perfectly. Who owns the number three overall pick, Paul? Can you tell me? The New England Patriots. The New England Patriots director of college scouting. The only thing he's done on Twitter in all like half a year is liking a tweet saying the Vikings have sent a massive How do you offer find that? I mean, three. you don't hear that <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> where else are you that? getting this <laughs> level of analysis? No, no, Ziggy, Ziggy, don't reveal where you saw that. <laughs> how I mean, you can go to Cameron Williams' how? like tweet. How, how did you see that? Dude, how did you see that? Paul. I am. You can see like tweets on Twitter. You don't want people don't understand no, 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 the research no, 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 I do no, no, for this no, no, show. That's not what I'm asking. People how don't understand the, the research do I do for across, this show. How do? You, yeah, yeah. How do you come across that? People don't understand the research I do that for is, the show. If you're not is, looking at the like tweets of the directors of scouting of wait, your wait, rivals, isn't May supposed to go number two? Well, Jay, I mean, there's been a lot. Man. There's been a lot of smoke. He's going number. Oh, that, uh, he's not going to make it because of uh, Jaden Daniels. Daniels. Okay. Okay. So wait a second. Because who went? Who went to? Who went to Washington? Jack, who's their offensive coordinator? I have no idea. Cliff Kingsbury. <laughs> who's who's the, who's, who's uh, Jaden Daniels' is number one comp? Will short athletic guy? Will uh, Will yeah. Kyler Murray? Anyone? Fair. Oh yeah. Okay. I I mean I mean Jaden's. I'm just saying, Paul. Like this is in all seriousness, our fans. This is a genuine. There's probably nothing comes of this. But if you're talking off season rumor mill, this is incredible. <laughs> If Drake Mays a Viking, I mean, I, I am very Let's go excited. back to this clip of Drake Mays. Oh, I'm I'm very excited about. It. I think that's the official stance of the show now. That has to be that Drake yeah. Mays is going to be a Viking. Uh, yeah. I think so, so whenever anyone asks me, coworkers, friends, family, they say, "Who are the Vikings drafting?" I'm going to say Drake, Drake May. May. I'm going to say yeah, I have sources. Drake, I have sources. Drake May. Well, they can find the sources now. All right, let's wrap it up. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Ziggy, that was arguably the greatest end of show tidbit I've ever heard. It's out there. Of any that, show ever. Oh, yeah, that was remarkable. If, if folks have to watch until the end if they want the scoop. <laughs> oh, my God. They'll get there. They'll get there. Paul, Paul's having visions. He sees the, the bombshell I just dropped. I know. I, I mean, yeah, I'm like, I'm if like you've made it to the here. end, folks, let me know what you think of this because I can keep digging for stuff like this. Interesting. All right. Well, well, we'll be back on Thursday. I mean, that, that was amazing. Um, yeah. We'll be back on Thursday. And oh, with Thursday, you get fresh episode of the show. Tournament day one. I mean, does it get any better than that? I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it does. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll see you soon.